Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. I'm here today with you to finish up this week of sharing some random scriptures. And I'll have one today and then another one tomorrow. But I hope you're having a good week. I hope it's been a really special time for you. I hope you've enjoyed being in God's presence. So today I want to read a passage from Ephesians chapter 5. And beginning with verse 15. So here's what it says. Be careful how you live. Well, let me stop right there. How many times has someone close to you, family member, something like that said, be careful. Or you've said to someone else, now, be careful when you leave. Uh, my wife tells me that all the time. My response is, you think I'm going to try not to be careful? But it's one thing to accidentally be careful. It's another thing to intentionally be careful. And it says here, be careful how you live. It goes on to give some specific thoughts. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Let's stop here a second. Don't look like fools. There's a passage in the in the old in the New Testament in the old King James about don't call somebody a fool. And whenever I hear that, I can see the image of my grandmother's face get all red and flustered when I called somebody, I think my brother, a fool. Oh, she attacked me. Don't you ever say that. Well, it's not saying it's the problem, it's acting like it. Now, I'm just going to be honest with you. I've done some stupid things. You know what? I'm going to do some more of them before I get out of this place. It wasn't so much that I wanted to. It's just I missed it. I wasn't thinking. And when we talk about living correctly, we need to talk about how we think and think correctly. A lot of people are struggling today. I uh, hope that's not you, but maybe it is. Struggling with what to do. And how do I do this? And how do I feed my family? Or how do I get out of this situation? Whatever. And, and Paul says, don't do that. So what does he say instead? Understand what the Lord wants you to do. Do you understand what the Lord wants you to do? Really? Have you ever thought about it? If, if you call yourself a Christian, I would suggest that you should have thought about it. But it doesn't mean what the Lord wants you to do down the road. It means do think about what God wants you to do right now. This very incident. And so I ask again, do you think about what the Lord wants you to do? And do you know what he wants you to do? Well, if you've never asked him, well, obviously you can't get an answer. <laughs> you can't get an answer to a question that you never ask. But if you have asked him and it seems like you're waiting forever for an answer, then at least do some of the things here while you're getting specific instructions. And you see, Paul writes this to everybody, not just special folks. Everybody, wherever you are in life today, if you're hanging on by a thread, <laughs> trying to climb out of the hole, or whether you're walking on the mountaintop, because everything is beautiful, God has something he wants you to do. 
And Paul alludes to that when he says, understand what the Lord wants you to do. And he goes on and he says, don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. <laughs> what a crazy statement. You know, people who think the Bible is a practical book have never really read it. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. As someone would say in my family, no, duh. I've known a lot of people for whom wine ruined their lives. Literally, wine. I've known others who've ruined their wives, lives over selfishness and anger and lack of forgiveness. Don't do that, Paul would say here. Why? Because it will ruin your life. You only got one life to live, folks. We don't get any do-overs in this world. We don't believe in reincarnation. I mean, if it is, maybe you get reincarnated as a slug. Think how awful that might be. <laughs> we get one chance at life. Who are we going to affect? Who are we going to? lift up and encourage. Who are we going to make a difference, a positive difference in their life? Well, I don't know who that is for you, but I know that there is a who for you. You just have to look for it. You just have to try to find it. And then it goes on to say, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing songs and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music in your hearts and give thanks to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give thanks for everything. If you think life is hard, and I'm not going to disagree with you, because it is, but if you think life is hard and unfair, okay, a lot of people agree with you. I agree with you. But if that describes your life, then the only way you can get out of it is by giving thanks for what you do have and not complain about what you don't have. In our culture today, we're focused on what we don't have. It's my time for fun. It's my chance to do this. I'm going to do this just for me. No, do it for somebody else. If you want to find real life, let yourself go and serve others. That's what this passage is about. And give thanks to everything to God for what he's done for you. When you think about it, I'll be back tomorrow and finish up this week. In the meantime, if you have a question or a need or something we can help you with, then let us know. Seriously, we'll do whatever we can as fast as we can. I hope you have a great today. And I hope you come back tomorrow for another great one. Take care. God bless you.